Welcome to part two of our interview with Robert Wunderlich, professor at the Academy of Jiu-Jitsu in Arvada, Colorado. And today we're going to pick up where we left off in that last podcast episode where um, Robert and I discussed what jiu-jitsu means to us, how we got involved, and a little bit about where we come from as human beings and how deeply connected we all uh, desire to be. On today's episode, we talk about plateaus in sports and plateaus in doing the personal growth work that we've both found has been so beneficial to us on and off the mat. I cannot thank Robert enough for her recording this episode because the second time we recorded as a follow-up, my mic wasn't on. So we addressed that right away and how taking ownership as a man is a big step forward in understanding that he is progressing towards an embodied masculine energy, as well as um, digging into what happens when men suppress their emotions. Anger is oftentimes the bodyguard of sadness. And so uncovering what's behind the emotion is a huge step forward in understanding how to embody a healthy masculine energy. If you like today's episode, please share it with one person that you feel would get value out of the conversation today. And while I have you, I have a big favor to ask please head on over to your favorite podcast platform, iTunes or Spotify, and give us a five-star rating and a written review. That really goes a long way to help us get the message of the Challenger podcast into more people's ears. As you may know, my full-time job is as a strength coach at Fit Life Champions in Denver, Colorado. I've owned my business for the past 10 years now, and we specialize in helping athletes reach their goals quickly and safely. We're offering special programs and discounts for the month of August and September 2021. So if you're looking for an in-home personal trainer in the Denver area or online elite level remote coaching anywhere at in the world, please click the link in the show notes below or head on over to fitlifechampions.com and book a complimentary consultation with me today. Without further delay, let's get into today's episode with Robert Wunderlich. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Challenger Podcast. It is part two of our series, actually part three, with Robert <laughs> Wonder. Like, uh, we chuckle because uh, the mu- the mic was on mute. All right, let me let me just own it. The mic was on mute. We spent an hour and eight minutes interviewing a couple weeks ago, and I had to reach out to you and say, Robert, I got to own it. My mic wasn't on. Can we can we do this again? Absolutely. <laughs> and and I bring that up because it it's hard for me to take ownership of mistakes. I think it's difficult for everyone to take ownership of mistakes. And in the, in the, the continuum of mistakes to make, that's not a big one to make. But I also hate wasting other people's time. Well, one, I don't think it was a waste of time. I think that we both took some value from that conversation, even though it may not be disseminated to everyone else, right? Totally agree. Um, <laughs> and I think that it's really important that we all understand that, like, when we do make mistakes, when we're not owning up to it, and we're, um, you know, like that nice guy or that, you know, kind of Marbo man or lone wolf mentality kind of comes into play, um, it's not only it's really wounding ourselves just as much as we're wounding others, Mm -hmm. right? And it's that little cut. It's that little wound that now we have to go back through. But when we're, when we have integrity and we fully live in that integrity and just let it come out and express that to others, I think that it's a a beautiful thing. Yeah. That's exactly what came up for me is, uh, I would be, uh, I would be feeling safer from an egoic stance to just not say anything and just to like, hide and isolate and not not come forward and not confess what was coming up for me instead i chose to say hey i gotta own it would you mind doing it again when are you free you know and we're back here at the academy of jiu-jitsu in arvada Mm -hmm. Uh, the first time we recorded was over zoom because it was in november of 2020 and we were were, i think we were both struggling (laughs) a little bit with um where does jujitsu fit into our lives? Where does business fit into our lives? And, and here we are, July of 2021, following up. And uh, the, the reason that this conversation got a, a scheduled again is I reached out over Instagram and I was talking about a plateau that I had hit in jujitsu. Mm-hmm. And just by naming it and labeling it and putting it out there to you, 
somebody that I trust and respect in the jujitsu world, but also in the men's work world, is I got to I gotta label it. As soon as I did, I bust through that plateau. Yeah, it's a recognition that, um, well, I'm going to say a couple things. One, uh, we need plateaus. They're a necessity, right? Like, an understanding that we are in a plateau is okay. One, it is naming it. It's, it's putting a value on it. It's saying, like, why am I so frustrated about this? Like, man, everyone that I used to be able to tap with this, I'm not tapping anymore. And this part of my game sucks. And that part of my game sucks. Well, the first part is, like, why am I saying that about myself? One, mm -hmm. that's the story I'm creating. So I'm, I'm literally placing myself in that plateau, right? Like, I'm in a plateau. Well, just by the fact of you saying it, then, of course, you're in a plateau, mm -hmm. right? And then just understanding that sometimes... Um, the story that we build and understanding that the story that we build is is there, okay? And then also understanding that there's the acceptance of that story. And then also just neurologically, like just brain-wise, like we need plateau, right? We need a time period where there is not much growth because literally the subconscious is like just trying to put together the puzzle. You know, your your subconscious mind is... It's got these two larger sections of the puzzle, and it's, oh, that doesn't work, right? <laughs> oh, that doesn't work. But it's got these major parts, right? And that's like you're going for, you normally hit this Kimura on everybody, and then all of a sudden it just stops working. And then another part of your game stops working, and then you start losing that faith in yourself, and that's when you start to build the story of the plateau, right? And behind the scenes, under the, behind the curtain per se, you know, the 95% of our brain that we aren't conscious of is sitting there, again, trying to put those pieces together. And I'm sure that you've experienced this before to where like all of a sudden you feel this just amazing leap in your game, right? After a plateau. Why? Because your brain just literally needs to get to a level of saturation. It just needs this piece and it needs that piece. And then finally it's able to put those two large sections together. It shoves it up into the conscious mind and it's like, Oh, and then you have that aha, man, I just got goosebumps thinking about it, right? <laughs> like you have that um, just amazing experience then, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden your game's doing this again. And then sooner than later, it's going to get to a point where it might level off a little bit and you're in a quote unquote plateau. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, my, my mind works over time to put the pieces of the puzzle together. And as I was... Um, preparing for part two and then now that we're recording for a third time, I, I listened to our first conversation twice in that time frame, and you were talking about supporting one another in the jiu-jitsu community. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it takes us reaching out to either from, from our place, reaching out to somebody else, hey, can I offer you support right now because I care about you, or me reaching out to you, you you're not my professor, but you're, you have impact and influence in my life. So because of our relationship, just happenstance reached out because something resonated with me that you shared or I shared and on Instagram and I'm like hey Robert I, I've hit a plateau and you just kind of walked me through it and I chose to reach out for support because where else is the frustration going to go it's going to come out sideways yeah absolutely I mean it's it, we're either going to bypass it or suppress it right yeah, let's talk about those two things because <laughs> uh, I didn't expect you to say that, but holy shit, once you did, I'm like, all right, we got we to gotta touch on what is bypassing, and then we'll talk about suppression. Uh, it doesn't, it's right here. <laughs> or like kind of walking around this big rock that's in our path of like, I see it coming, no, I'm just going to take yeah, this. Yeah, I know that it's, it's this face staring at you. Right? It's like that awkward person that's staring at you that you feel is staring at you, but like you don't Tony want to Rob do... Tony Robbins. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that you don't want to, you know, like you want to do everything to prevent yourself from looking at it because then you have to accept what's there. Mm -hmm. Right? You have to accept that it actually exists. Yeah. So instead of doing that, we bypass it. Yeah. We were just talking about bypassing um, things that come up in our shadow with positivity. There's such a thing as toxic positivity, and that's certainly bypassing other emotions yeah absolutely I mean I think in anything man like one of the biggest lessons that I've done in the last year like that I've gained from the last year of really diving deep into the work man and I, I say capital T capital W the work because <laughs> it's hard it's the it's this it's the inner work it's what we as 
men really kind of a bypass a lot in our lives, right? Yeah, true. And then um, it comes out later. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, so coming coming to the place where like what we have to do is really come into anything with intent. Right? Like if you're going to if you're gonna drink, it's not just drinking to numb. It's mm -hmm. not just drinking to remove yourself from something. It's not to bypass or to numb, right? It's, you're gonna, hey, I'm accepting the fact that I'm having friends over tonight. Um, we're gonna have a good time. My intent tonight is that I'm gonna let my, I'm gonna allow myself to drink tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have a good time. Or we, marijuana, or whatever it may be, right? It, mm -hmm. I think that anything um, needs to be done with intent. Sure. Right? right? And yeah. including joy, include, you know, including seeking joy, right? I think that's the difference. Just accepting that joy is there is awesome. Yeah. And also on the flip side of that, accepting that we're in the shit too, right? I think that that's, there's tons of value there, that no matter what life is presenting at that time, is the acceptance of that time. It's, being present in those moments. Yeah, I agree. You know, like to where the ebbs and the flow, you're not on this, just these huge swings from highs to lows, experiencing the highest of the highs, and then right after that crashing to the lowest of the lows, right? But like getting to where that evens out a little bit. And by mm -hmm. no means do, am I saying utopia. Like honestly, fuck utopia. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's an idealistic vision of what um, some people who start jujitsu believe and people who start the work believe. There's a correlation here. There's uh, there's a plateau in doing the work as well. Absolutely. I mean, look, do you, okay, so we, another topic that we wanted to talk about today was competing, right? And I don't think that we got to suppression, but you know, just suppression meaning that we're like, we're gonna do everything to make sure that it doesn't come yeah. up. Alcohol, right? weed, porn, yeah. uh, toxic positivity, like Absolutely. all the of those. Absolutely, the stuff that we shove in our shadow, the yeah. stuff that we never, it's grandma's basement, right? <laughs> You remember going down to grandma's basement, like as a kid, you'd go down to grandma's basement and there'd be that creepy shadow thing in the, in the corner and all she wanted you to grab was the like paper plates. Or the canned pickles because we were big canners. So. Right? And then what did you do on the way up the stairs? Ran. Like you, I ran. Yeah, dude. Like the hair <laughs> stood up on the back of your neck and you went running up the stairs. Yeah. Well, there's, we, there's, a, there's old boxes down there that grandma has shoved in the basement as well. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the shadow, so. <laughs> that is the shadow, right? Which, you know, um, having done the work, the shadows, you know, for a lot of men, it's sex, money, right, and power. Like, those, those things are the things that we really tend to suppress. Now, just also remember, like, and I know that you're, you work with Connor Beaton, and um, he's amazing as far as the shadow goes. Like, I have a ton of respect for him in that realm. And, um, I know he's got a book coming out about it, which I'm really looking forward to. So yeah, 2022 um, sometime. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a uh, um, shining a light on it, knowing that it's never going to go away, right? So okay, so let's let's flip the script back to jujitsu. Uh huh. Plateaus in competition. Plateaus, competition, but also just in a general sense of jujitsu. Um, been training for a very long time now. And what keeps me coming? What keeps me going? What keeps me, you know what I mean? Continuing to find the, the joy in, you know, in doing jujitsu. And that's, that's keeping the curiosity. Um, it's finding the greatest joy in the most minute little details. You know, like um, just knowing that I'm always going to be seeking perfection, not trying to be perfect that kills us that destroys us right yeah another part of the shadow there yeah absolutely and I also don't want to just settle for excellence right I don't want to settle for excellence I want to be striving for perfection so mm. really like the um, my best friend one of my best friends Ruben Morgan who's also my business partner you know he's really the one that gave me the name for the association shucking in you know um, and shucking in Japanese is like it's mastering your craft and really, that's what I see in both realms, both the work, jiu-jitsu, it's that seeking, it's always the constant seeking of perfection. It's the constant sharpening of the blade. It's never setting it down, mm -hmm. right? All in knowing I never will be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, and we were talking about um, do, beginning the work. We'll get to that in a second. But also 
uh, we face plateaus in doing the work as well. And it can be awfully frustrating of like, do I need to take a break right now because I've put too much in it and I need to get something out of it now or um, contribute to others? Like, I'm so full of this information and I want to like vomit it on other people. That might, that might be us in a plateau. Absolutely. And um, getting back to the fact that now I'm, I'm creating that story that I'm in plateau. And, okay, sometimes yeah, I'm yeah, not, yeah. and sometimes I'm not cognizant of that story yet. Mm -hmm. But it's becoming that. But also just understanding like um, in the jujitsu sense, so competition. So bring me back real quick. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. I apologize. Um, no, it's all, it's all good. We were talking about my plateau in jiu-jitsu and labeling it, naming it, and now we're talking about the plateau in the work. Okay, there, thank you. Yeah, so, of course. <clears throat> in jiu-jitsu, and I want to use the jiu-jitsu frame for this, right, is that can you, can you com like, do competition-level training all year round? No. Why? Uh, well, you're expending a lot of energy, and eventually, uh, from my sports science background, Overtraining comes into play, um, which means that you have less energy every time that you train, which means that you'll hit a plateau, and there's no growth when you're at 100, per, 100 miles an hour, 100% output every time. Oh, that's actually a really good way to say it. There's not going to be growth when you're putting out 100% effort. Dude, you're going you're gonna to get to the bones and skeletons of yourself, right? Like you're gonna literally, and you're gonna break down. You're most likely gonna get injured. You're gonna mm -hmm. be, have that forced time off, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, st I started the plateau in jujitsu that we were talking about because of a shoulder injury that turned into a back injury that was like the reminder of, you gotta slow down. What can I, what so can I take our away? Our bodies will naturally sometimes be like, hey, cool health. Hi, <laughs> hi, yeah, I, need to, I need you to take care of me. And I think that the work does the same thing, our minds, do the same thing, right? I'm personally in, I would say I know that I'm in a plateau right now and I'm accepting that I'm in a plateau, but it's also a forced plateau, right? So- um, A chosen plateau? It is, it's okay. a chosen plateau. It's for me choosing to allow myself to just be, f just flow train right now, to put it in a different term, right? So there's competition training, there's you know, and there's everywhere in between. One of the hardest things that we can learn in jujitsu is how to have volume control, right? Mm -hmm. When you first start jujitsu, you have an on off switch and that's it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right, like you literally are on or you're off and there's nothing in between. Mm -hmm. And maybe you get a blue belt and you add a nine and an eight on the volume scale, right? Now you don't, now you don't have to go at a 10, 100% of the time like you did on and off right? Mm -hmm. Because you just didn't know any better. And now you, maybe you've added an eight. And when you get a purple belt, maybe you add a six, maybe all the way down to a five. You understand the, the pace that you can go because your knowledge is great enough that you can go at that pace and still be successful in jiu-jitsu. When you get a black belt, you know that you can go at a one, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And still have an intention for the practice of the day. Absolutely. Which in turn makes you successful building self-efficacy and... And I can sit here and I can be lazy, I, I can flop all over the mat and I can let you pass my guard and know that I'm still completely safe. I'm not gonna let an arm go, I'm not gonna get choked, I'm not, right? Because my defense is so good and it's set up so well that like, I have faith in everything that I do, mm -hmm. right? Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And you have, and how do you play in that, you know what I mean? How do you play in that scale? You know, like did I shut off all the way as far as my work goes? No, you know, I'm allowing myself to be free in this moment. I'm allowing myself after doing a ton of work this spring, you know, like, man, I had bi-weekly calls with Traver Bohm of, you know, Man and Civilized, or the Uncivilized Nation and Man and Civilized, you know, the Uncivilized Movement and um, started work with, uh, with Michael Gay doing therapy sessions bi-weekly. And then I did Mike Campbell's Get Your Shit Together course, right? And one of my brothers from the nation, um, Traver's Nation, Derek Craig, he was my accountability buddy. And like, we, we trudged through this shit together, man. Like we, like, <laughs> it was rough, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so the, the combination of those things, like that was a lot of work condensed in a, uh, that was competition level training, yeah. you know, for like 10, eight, you know, eight, 10, 12 weeks, something like that. And now 
like, oh yeah, I gotta remember to allow myself to process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I gotta allow myself for some of those things to come up that weren't gonna come up in the intense work. If I go, if I train with you and I go 100 miles an hour, am I feeling everything? No. Mm -hmm. Am I understanding the technique or am I, am I feeling some of those gaps with athleticism, strength and power? Yeah, right? yeah that's a good point. When I can start to slow it down and I can really turn down the volume, then what am I applying? Then what am I gaining an understanding of? I'm understanding the gaps. Mm -hmm. I'm understanding, oh, oh, first I recognize like, oh damn, there is a gap there, right? I can't perform this arm lock if I'm not just like absolutely launching it. Mm, okay, maybe there's a gap in my understanding. Maybe there's a gap in the level, right? That I don't understand exactly how to do this technically. Technically sound. That, because to me, that's perfect jujitsu. That you know something's coming. You see that it's coming and I can still do it to you, right? With as little effort as possible. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been the other person in that position many, <laughs> many times. You know, I got to spar with our, with our general manager to stripe black belt for the first time in a really long time. You know, I, I can't attend the advanced classes in the evenings when, when he's coaching and, and our instructor. So the first chance that I got, I asked, can we spar tonight? Can we, can we compete tonight? And yeah, he, he technically, with, with smooth ability, did what he wanted. And that's a great learning lesson for me. Uh, going up to that skill level of like, I, I want to get better. Uh, I felt myself coming out of the plateau. It wasn't long after you and I discussed the word plateau in jujitsu and I felt myself coming out of it. And there are, there are a lot of opportunities for us when we take our foot off of the gas pedal to contribute back to our community. Absolutely. Um... I mean, but it also opens up those avenues. Why, why is that, though? Why <laughs> because that we're not so consumed with, I got to do this, I got to do this, I'm going to take on this for myself. Okay, well, now I'm just full to the brim. And where is that, where is that going to go? Is it going to come out through mentorship? Is it going to come out through leadership? Is it going to come out sideways through my emotions because I don't know how to process them? I'm just bypassing and suppressing them. Well, and we end up we end up shitting all over ourselves, and we end up and shitting all over everyone else, right? I, I've chosen to remove the word "should" from my vocabulary. I think that's amazing, man. Um, you know, like I'm I'm someone who cautions the you know using the word expectation, right? Like, but most people don't even identify that they're expecting something of themselves. You know, going back to that reference of you training as a blue belt with your professor, second degree black belt, right? That's, that's at least six years deep as a black belt. So your expect what, you know, some people like, but that elbow knee escape didn't work on professor. <laughs> <laughs> Did I expect it to? Right. Am but there, there, is expe there is that expectation in the jujitsu realm. Right? There's that expectation of watching a, you know, how many, dude, let's be honest. On your Instagram feed, how many moves can you see in an hour? If you scrolled for an hour, how many moves could you see? Thousands. Thousands. Yeah. Right? And what is the representation of all those moves? So, to you. I don't, I don't know if I understand the question clearly. So um, when you look at that move, how, what is your expectation that you're going to know that move now? Oh, very because I live in a reality very low. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm a kinesthetic learner. I, I can visually see it um, perform, say like the structure of a jujitsu class, instruction, drilling, come back and review. Instruction, drilling, come back for a review and then apply it um, as the years go by. Mm -hmm. I, I get value from seeing it performed by our instructor, but I have to try it myself. Yes. Um, would you mind if I just reframe one word? Yeah, let's do it. Just use that same word you just used. Do it. Do it. Right? I need to do it myself. Yeah. Right? What did I say? Try it. Oh, I need to try it myself. Okay. Right? Yeah. I need to do it myself. Because <laughs> really, man, um, honestly, that's one of the biggest things that we don't realize. That, like, just the words that we use are, are real things. 
every word that we choose in our vocabulary on a daily, and jiu-jitsu is hard enough. And I don't want to try anything in jiu-jitsu. Why don't I want to try anything in jiu-jitsu? Because try already has the implication and the, the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it implies failure. I'm already accepting the fact that I'm going to fail at it. Okay. Uh, fail forward is... Fail forward, yeah. right? But what comes on the other side? Well, I tried at least. Does that make sense? Sure. Uh, it sounds like um, an excuse. It sounds like, well, I don't need to try it again. So, But at least I tried. Yeah. Right? Whereas when I'm doing it and I fail, I'm going to do it again. Right? That's failing forward right. to me. So I, I feel as if both try and do it have some expectation with it. Um, I'm going to try it expecting it to fail. I'm going to do it expecting it to fill in the blank. Fail also. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it, but then I'm going to do it again. Right. Right? So, Versus try lets you off the hook. Right. Let's, let's dig a little deeper and swap out do it with execute. Execute? Yeah, absolutely. I feel that do is the same as execute. Mm -hmm. right? So execution has no expectation of perfection along with it. Now, I wouldn't say that do has any expectation of perfection either, personally, mm -hmm. right? I think that do is just a, it's a frame, it's a frame that I'm going to continue to do this. That that's my, that is my bottom line. Fair. Right? That yeah. I'm, hey, and you see how light I am now, <laughs> right? Yeah. My expectation is that I'm going to, I am going to do this. And mm -hmm. some, and, oh, well, you know, maybe I didn't do it well today, but I just haven't done it well comma yet enough yeah. right yeah. yeah yeah dude man like how many times have you personally in your jiu-jitsu journey be like man i just can't get this <laughs> enough times yeah right and then just <laughs> now from here forward just add the comma yet yeah because look then you're looking then you're no longer looking from the fat end of the funnel into the skinny end right you're you're seeing just a small number of possibilities now you're looking from the skinny end of the funnel through the fat end mm-hmm Right? Yep. Now you're understanding that, oh man, I've got the possibility of actually getting this. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I hear you on that one. And in between recording a second time and the third time, we're doing it again, right? <laughs> we're just, I'm not going to try to record. I'm just going to do it, right? Right. Uh, I, what I didn't know is that we've experienced car accidents that impact our jujitsu journey. And yes. I, was, I was sharing a, a story of a car accident, really minor. I got. Uh, sideswiped on my way to work. 9 a.m. Monday morning, I was a few minutes late to the session with the client, but I got sideswiped, do, doing about 25 miles an hour, and what I didn't know at the time was that that small, minor impact was going to jar loose all of the stored memories in my central nervous system and my body. And I was sharing with you that I was scheduled to compete five days later. And instead of listening to my body, I chose to compete anyways. Can I ask what led to the decision to compete anyways? Um, what was the thinking? I felt as if like I could just push through, bypass what was coming up, suppress what was coming up, and just do it anyways. Okay. And I also just ask like, was it be, did part of it have to do with the fact that it was just 25 miles an hour? Sure, I was definitely rationalizing the my the momentum and the inertia and things oh, like that. Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal. Oh, it's right. not that big. How many, how many times have you heard that in, in the men's community? Yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal. And <laughs> so I, in reflection, this is almost four years ago now, in reflection, I didn't listen to my body, but I also didn't store that car accident as new trauma. What it did is it released old trauma. And so I, I carried it with me. I'm still a white belt at the time. This is the second time I'm competing. Mm. Second time I'm competing at white belt. And I wanted to invite my partner to come view the tournament. You know, and all of this just trauma was leaking out everywhere. And I show up to the tournament, not focused, not ready, not prepared. My body wasn't feeling good. Um, I had to get chiropractic work done. Again, all of these signs for me to just stop just listen and went with my partner and my daughter and a friend to the to the tournament on the saturday and just 
my life imploded after that. Work got bad, the relationship ended, and I went way dark, way deep. And I chose, this is in November, and I chose in January to ask for help for the first time in probably 17 years. Getting goosebumps again, bro, and, and thank you for sharing that, by the way. Yeah. And I, I feel that. Mm -hmm. And um, something that I really appreciated that you said is like it, it actually not only created new trauma, but also released a lot of old trauma. So I can, I can feel that completely. Mm -hmm. And it, it was truly the rock bottom, the catalyst moment, the car accident leading up to me not saying no to myself for the tournament that led me to uh, sabotage my relationship, um, hit another rock bottom, and then finally seek out counseling. Amazing, brother. This reminds me of um, something that I heard from a gentleman named Asher Packman. He's down in Australia, um, and uh, he calls it the feather, the brick, and the train, right? The universe will generally like tickle you <laughs> with, the, with the feather, right? With the feather being like, mm -hmm. uh, there, there, this may not be the path that you need to be on, or this isn't the life that you need to be living. And then the next thing you know, like the brick will land and it hits you in the head and you're like, God, and most of us, right? It the wasn't accident that may have been the brick, right? The accident was the brick. The, the thing that we know, it hurt, it hurt. But we're still just not. We're still gonna just take that next step forward. Cause I got, man, I'm fine. I'm fine, right? I'm gonna suppress this. I'm gonna bypass this. Like I've got like no problem. It was a minor accident. We're creating this story. We're building this story to you know totally ignore everything that's there. And then the next one is that freight train, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. that's the ending of the relationship that's the poor poor you know the representation of yourself at the tournament right like that's all those things and then after that that rock bottom right so I'm still working really hard to understand like the bricks <laughs> yeah <laughs> when the bricks get thrown and like uh, don't ignore that that hurt you know and then hopefully you know through more time I'll, I'll start to understand when the feathers are starting to tickle right, right. Um, I hope you know, and there's so much value in the freight train, though. Like, what did the freight train do for you? It wiped the slate clean so that I could start fresh again. And I, f I found a good counselor, um, gave it a year, maybe more. Um, ultimately, not the best fit for me, but it was what I needed at the time. Uh, working my way through cognitive behavior therapy, where it's just reframing the things that we say and understanding that that had a fundamental impact on my life to layer uh, to lay a layer of foundation for me. Okay, all right. Well, I I met my capacity in that growth time frame, so I chose to take a break because maybe I had plateaued, or maybe I had come to an understanding that I need to trust myself better and say, okay, this served its purpose. Now I'm ready to move forward and mm. try, try other things to help, me, uh, to help me move forward. So I took a little break from counseling. This would probably be um, November or December of 2019. Okay. Took a break, uh, took a break from all personal, not all personal growth because I was still recording the podcast and still having conversations with people and still reading. But I took a break from men's work and I took a break from counseling in the same month. Like, okay, it served its purpose. Let me process everything that came up. Let me build trust in myself by saying no to other people. I'm like, no, I'm not ready to continue this. And so when March of 2020 came around, I was like, okay, there's a brick, maybe even a freight train that the pandemic shut down a stream of in income for me, uh, closing the gym at the time. And I had a lot of question marks. So I found the Alliance and it was the right choice for me at the time. But within that container, there are a lot of other choices that I can make to continue on that path. Uh, one of which I was telling you about earlier, of he asked for volunteers to lead weekly group calls. You know, I feel as if that's the right next step for me. And from that moment, uh, exponential experiential growth. 
Yeah, I think um, to, you know, we've both been working with some, I would say, powerhouses in the men's world, you know, um, with yourself, Connor Beaton, with myself, Traver Boehm, you know, and um, one of Traver's biggest questions is what are you building? You know, and I think that we as men need to be understanding what we're building because that's where the majority of our our passion, our our being is going to go into, right? Like that calling, you know, um, to something greater than yourself. Yeah. Um, but how do you get to something greater than yourself without doing this first? Yeah, very true. Right? Like you have to build some foundational pieces. You have to get to an understanding of what triggers you. What What is your past trauma? Like what's your childhood trauma? What's some other trauma that came up? You know, like you... And dude, that's the shit. That's the stuff that like becomes really, really difficult to to wade through. Mm -hmm. Just like jujitsu is really, really difficult, right? Like, and that's you know, I know that's my calling. That's what I'm building. I'm building an ability to bring all of all of the versions of Robert together into one, mm -hmm. right? Because before it was the you know I was a professional archaeologist for 20 years. You know, I have a master's degree in anthropology. Like, what do I do with this now? You know, and then there's the second degree black belt Robert, and then there's the outdoorsman, you know, and like how do I bring all of these things kind of under one roof to like really provide a path to walk. Right. You know, just shining a light, and that's it. I'm, I, I'm not gonna, dude, I tell students this all the time, like in Jiu Jitsu, the respect comes naturally, and, but honestly, the only difference between you and myself as far as on this mat goes is time spent. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm a flawed, I'm a flawed human being just like the rest of them, right? And I, I don't need to be put on a pedestal as a human, right? Do I deserve respect for the time that I've spent on the mat? Yes, that's why you call me professor. That's, mm -hmm. that's why mm -hmm. the, you know, that order is there. But beyond that, like, I tell students all the time, when you see me outside of here, you don't have to call me professor. Like, hey, Robert, yeah. how are you? I'm, I'm, just a, I'm just a human, right? Yeah, so it, it sounds as if, like, you had already created something bigger than yourself by building a community in the jujitsu um, sport. Yeah, absolutely. And there was still uh, another opportunity for you to do the work. 1,000%. <laughs> so uh, tell me more about the, the experience of building a, a business, but also a community of people who, who love jujitsu and who practice it for their own reasons. And then also, understanding that you personally had more opportunity to grow as dude man um i was shitting all over myself you know i was like my relationships with my family my relationships with students you know with other people around me like man i just i continually had the same cycles Right? Like, and then I started asking myself like why questions and not the good kind of why questions. Like why does this work kind of a question. It's more of like why do I keep failing at this kind of question. Right? To where it, it's, it's a, it becomes a detriment to you when you ask why of yourself. Why can't I get this? Why do I keep struggling with this? Because it's just so open ended. It gives you no answers. Right, and then you walk on and you try to answer that why, and then the next thing you know, you, you're right back to where you started again. You fell on your face again. You're standing in the same place you did a week ago. You know, like, oh man, I just, I just totally yelled at my kids again. You know, like, uh, again. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And then, okay, with the work, started to come the how questions. The where, where does this come from? Okay, how does this come up for me? what in my past triggers me, right? Um, how, what, where, when, right? When in my past did this happen? Where does this trauma come from, right? Like, what exactly is it? Those are now much more growth mindset type questions and I can get curious about it and I can start to dig more, right, effectively if that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Because now I can get an answer to the, to the what, what is it? Okay, well then I get to one section of the what and then understand that like, oh man, there's, there's more to dig there and that's okay, right? The process is always going to be there. Um, you know, I forget who said it, but it's like we pass through a membrane, right? This isn't, this isn't something that I've come up with, but like you pass through a membrane and all that means is like, because 
you, you've done the work. And how many times have you gone like, oh man, I just went through this total, like I've totally shifted. I've totally like shed a self part of myself. I've killed portion of myself, which is hard as hell because that portion of yourself got you to where you are. And right? it wants to, it wants to stick around Fuck yeah, it as does, badly right? as yeah. anything. <laughs> and sometimes that ghost of that thing comes back and haunts you a little bit. And you're like, ah, where are you coming from again? AKA the shadow. Yeah. The shadow or, you know what I mean? Like there's all kinds of things. Yeah. So bypassing and suppressing all, all coming back to <laughs> remind you. So then you pass through that membrane and then you just realize there's more shit. But what is that a representation of though? Is it actually more shit? Or is it just the fact that you've passed through a more me like through a membrane that allows you to take on more? Right? That now you have the ability to take on more in that moment. You have the ability to understand more depth to that. Right? To me, getting back to that Instagram feed, man, like, okay, you can watch a hundred moves. But the representation of those moves is that person working that move for how many, for how many hours? How many reps has that person done that move? Mm -hmm. And it's theirs. They own it. Yeah. And then the ego comes in and says like, oh, I can own that too. Without any of the things that that person did. Yeah. It's not likely that I will watch a video of a Barambola and try and do it perfectly the first time. No, when, wouldn't we, anything in life, what do we do perfectly the first time? <laughs> Nothing. And I'll, I'll re-ask I'll re that question. What worth doing, right, Yeah. is this something that we picked up the first time and we nailed it, Fair. right? Because Fair. most of the time, if you have ever done anything well the first time, do you continue to do it? Mm. Or does your mind get bored with it and you're like, oh, done it, move on with it? <laughs> yeah, that, that hits home for me. So understanding that being part of something bigger like the the nation and then bringing this new understanding and knowledge back to your your already existing community mm -hmm. how has that empowered you and your students well i think it's just a it's it's a new representation of me right like grounded present you know the ability to understand what's my shit understand what is other people's shit. That's one of the biggest things that I've learned in the last year. Like, oh, that's my shit. I'm getting triggered. Like, oh, here, oh, okay. Now I need to, I need to deal with this, right? Like that's me being triggered right now. That's not someone else's shit, that's mine. Mm -hmm. And then also knowing like, oh, that's, that's not my shit. And I don't have to carry that, right? Am I here for support? Am I here to help that person if, if necessary or if they're willing? Absolutely. But also understanding like, guess what? I don't have to put that luggage on my back and carry it. Because how much do we do that in life? Yeah. That we have an interaction with someone and not realize the difference of what my shit or we can't, like it's just so blended. It's so intertwined, mm -hmm. right? That like, just not understanding like what's my shit, what's their shit, you know what I mean? And sometimes both come up. Sometimes it, they get triggered and it's their shit. Sometimes that we get triggered and it's our shit. And we gotta understand what's mine, what's theirs. And then sometimes we're present and we create a boundary, right? Which is so important, a frame per se in jujitsu. And now their shit ramps up and it's like, oh, okay, well, that's not, hey, I'm sorry that you're experiencing that. I have compassion for you. I have empathy for you because I've been there. But at the same time, I'm choosing this moment not to carry it. Yeah. And becoming more grounded and present, what does that do for you as an instructor? Man, I mean, presence in instructing is probably like the, one of the quintessential things that you need to have, right? When you're distracted, when you're, people can feel when you're not there. People can feel when you're not invested, you know? Like, and again, it's not just wounding you, it's wounding them. You know, like, and I've, I'm definitely guilty of that, man. I've had periods of time where that has happened, no doubt, no doubt, you know? And like, um, only in the last year have I really started to gain that understanding of, of grace and compassion, because that allows me to be more grounded and present. Mm -hmm. You know, just uh, really coming back to that all the time of, yeah, I fucked that up. I'm gonna learn from that. Is it okay? Well, yes, it is okay, right? It's okay that I fucked it up. 
instead of the perpetual like, well, you fucked that up and then God, you're an asshole. And then now yeah. we're down in the downward right, spiral right. of the inner critic, right? Right. But to sit here and then say, man, I'm going to own that. I own that I fucked up. I'm not bypassing it. I'm not suppressing it. I'm owning that I fucked up. And I also know that I'm a human being and I'm going to fuck things up. Right. Yeah, that sounds familiar to the beginning of the conversation about uh, understanding uh, understanding that I didn't unmute the mic and owning it and understanding that like having the expectation of perfection every time is a losing battle. Absolutely. And, you know, can I ask like um, what was the story that you were creating about me, right, in that moment? Does that make sense? Sure, absolutely. Uh, you know, the story that you were a part of was simply just like, he's going to believe that I wasted his time. I'm not going to show up as professional as I want to. Things like that, where, where I'm not outsourcing it to anybody else, where I'm able to turn the mirror back on myself is understanding that my responsibility, you know, I asked for the, I asked for the conversation initially and if I screwed up, then okay, well the best choice for me, for me is to ask for the conversation again, explain what happened and just understanding that no is a possibility and, and that's okay. And what was the other side of that? What came from that? What was your experience? From being honest and in integrity with myself it was a quick yes from you like no worries i understand absolutely but how many times do we do that in life every day right how many times do we create this mount everest of something mm -hmm. how many men have you spoken to to coming to the work too many to count how many men or women have you told about jujitsu too many to count right how many have come five percent maybe max okay but that's the thing, is all of us need to realize that the story of the shit that we're in, right, that comfort, the comfort of the shit that we're in, and then the story that we build of all the work and all the hardship and all the, you know, like, bullshit that we're going to have to go, all the pain that we're going to have to experience to get out of our shit is literally what keeps us in our shit. Yeah, there's a lot of limiting beliefs in there. Of like, right. I can never, I won't be able to. And that's an analogy that Mike Campbell used in the Get Your Shit Together course, man, that like, I'm, I'm taking with me. So I got to give credit where credit is due. But really, that's, it is, it's so true, right? Like, man, I'm building this Mount Everest of a story. Like, oh, I'm going to have to do this, and then I'm going to have to do this, and then I'm going to have to do this, and then I'm going to have to do this. But really, like, like I tell people all the time, starting jujitsu, they come in here for the first time, and I tell them they already took the hardest step. Am I telling them that jujitsu is not hard? Am I telling them that they, right that they're not going to have struggles? No, but honestly, the hardest step for anybody is to just come through the door, just to pull that door open, walk into this academy. To me, is the hardest step because mm -hmm. I know people that literally I've I have friends that literally drove to an academy for two and a half months, almost every week for two and a half months, would drive to the academy, sit in the parking lot, and be like, nope, not today, and then drive home. Hmm. Right? And Where, then finally yeah. they did make that decision, and now they're, they've been training for five years, you yeah. know? And where else do we see that showing up in our lives? And that's the beauty, right? Yeah. Is, you know what it takes? It just takes the dedication of the first step. Yeah, we don't need to know the next, the next step after that. We just no. need to know the first one. The one step. What's the saying in jujitsu, man? What's our, what is, and I said that I, expectation is one of those words to stay away from, right? Uh -huh. But like, really, healthy expectation is okay. Having an intent with expectation, right? Okay, well, what, what's the, what should be your expectation in jujitsu to get better? To show up. Show up. That's it. Right? Hey, look. I'm looking to get 1% better, 1% better every day. I take now, dude, it took, dude, I trained for <laughs> a long time. It's only been in the last year that I've really been like, oh yeah, I should also take that same approach to life. So trust me, <laughs> it's not like this is something that like I've carried with me my whole, 
life, right? Mm -hmm. In reality, it's just the understanding that every, even in this time that I'm giving myself, I'm accepting the fact that I'm allowing myself to be quote unquote in a plateau in the work is just also understanding like, okay, I'm still waking up every single day knowing that I'm going to get 1% better. Why? How? Not the why, right? But how? How am I, how is that expectation valid? Well, it's the choice. It's the choice to do it, right? That's the simple, that's the simple step. I'm choosing to be more aware of my triggers. I'm choosing to be more aware of how I show up in my relationships. I'm choosing to be more aware of my shit and my shadow and you know what I mean? Like in mm -hmm. those things and that's, that's just it. I tell people all the time, there's two secrets to jujitsu. Perseverance and repetition. <laughs> They're not hacks, right? There is no shortcut. But what is perseverance? Perseverance is the thing, that little voice in your head, that when you go home and you're exhausted after your day at work, and you see those cold beverages in the fridge, and you hear Netflix calling your name, and you feel that, like, you can literally feel that couch just like, you haven't sat down yet, but you can experience that couch just sucking you into it. And you sit, you know, instead it's perseverance. It's like, nope, mm-mm. Grabbing my gi, grabbing my bag, putting it in the car, driving the 10 minutes to the academy. And guess what you're naturally going to get when you get to the academy? You're going to get your reps. And if we're conscious in the daily work, you're naturally going to get your reps. It's not using those things to numb, right? If I'm conscious, if I'm present, then, then I'm going to naturally get my reps. But that, that takes perseverance, right? Mm -hmm. that, that daily choice every day to wake up and be like, man, yeah, I'm going to choose to do this today. Oh, my kid's really triggering me. Oh. Mm. A very good reason to go to jujitsu. <laughs> a very good reason to go to jujitsu and or a very good reason to pause and maybe go journal about it. Yeah. Or reach out to one of the men in your group. Yeah, absolutely. Like, hey, put a post up on Mighty Networks, you know? Like, man, my kid is triggering the hell out of me today in this way. And having four other men, you know, come to you and be like, dude, I've experienced the exact same thing. I feel you. I hear you, right? To know that we're not in this stuff alone, mm -hmm. right? And that's where that suppression and the numbing normally takes us is that we feel like we're on our own. And that, for me, was one of the biggest catalysts for change last year was like, yeah, I can't do this alone. Yeah, very well said. That, that resonated with me and I appreciate you sharing that. I think that's my big takeaway from today. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm really just trying to, you know, um, like I said, bring the blend of these things together. You know, for me moving forward is, you know, continuing to build this amazing community here at the Academy of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Arvada and also the extension, you know, through the Shekin and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Association. You know, like um, just having the ability to let someone find themselves through Jiu-Jitsu, right? Because really it's not me. I, I'm, I, I'm not that egoic, right? Like it's not me making the change because reality, like I can't do Jiu-Jitsu for you. Right? Just like I can't right. do your life for you. I can't live your life for you. Um, and, and we can't ignore the contribution that you do have. And that's not I'm not, right? Mm -hmm. I'm accepting that contribution, but really that's just the light. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm, choosing, I'm choosing to turn the light on. I'm choosing to shine a light on a path, right? So is that a contribution? Yes. Yeah. But is it mine? That's my ownership of turning the light on. That's what I own. Does that make sense? It does. Right? I can't, I'm not, I'm not walking that path. I've walked my own path. Mm -hmm. Right? So really bringing those things together, the anthropology background, you know, like having the idea of how we work culturally, what are cultural drivers, you know, what, what kind of influences that have on us personally, all the way down to the psychology of all those things. Right? Um, and then how does that apply in jujitsu? How can we get better through that understanding in jiu-jitsu? And then also, how do we now blend that into how do I get better here within yeah. myself? 
Yeah, I appreciate that a lot. Well, thanks again, Robert. Of course, man. Pleasure Thank having you. the conversation, and uh, I'm going to stick around for class if that's yep. all right with you. Please do. <laughs> The challenge we face today is that we are more connected to our devices than we are to ourselves and to one another. We are so distracted by instant gratification and access to information, images, and influence that we are numbed by it. Social media, porn, and dating apps have convinced us that we can have what we want whenever we want it, so we shrink inward. We are putting other people's needs before our own, and that leaves us feeling small and unseen in our partnerships. We put others up on a pedestal, which leaves us discounting our truest potential in life.